Hello, welcome back to my outdoor bench build. Whilst I've had a couple of weeks over at Workshop 2, the garden has taken over my workspace. In this video, I'm going to develop or enhance the routering capabilities of this bench. And it starts off with a guide rail I bought a while ago to work with this T-Track I have routed into the bench top. And without the need of the three plastic washers, it is a really good fit. Firstly, I need to get the workbench set up for cutting and routering by installing the two modules I made in earlier videos. This tail end module supports my track saw and rail and also provides a sacrificial insert for cutting against. And this infill router plate supports my Triton router. My local shop seems to have changed its supply of 18mm MDF. This two foot square piece has a really shiny slidey face and a much denser core than normal. And for this build, the shiny slidey face may be ideal. The first thing I needed to do was work out what size I would need this panel. And to do this, I envisage using it with the router, the sliding track and the board. And I eventually came to the conclusion that 450 by 600 millimeters or 18 inch by 24 inch was the perfect size. So once I got my tools assembled, I took my track saw and made the cut. In order to router a plethora of grooves for my clamps, I bought this T-groove cutter from Axminster Tools. And with the cutter installed in the router, I made a trial cut into some scrap. Here I'm trying my Vico clamps I bought from Banggood and they fit just perfectly. And here I'm trying Axminster's own clamps. As you'd expect they fit perfectly and I tightened up the clamps as much as I could to see if I could break the groove. Just to point out, Axminster have not supplied these, I've bought them with my own money. Although, if the wife asks, I definitely get given all these things. Ok, so with the router cutter set about 50mm or 2 inch from the edge, I made a series of cuts around each of the four edges. So, after the first pass, it looks like this. I then moved the router fence back as far as I possibly could and made another four passes. Dust extraction doesn't work very well with these T-slots, so as you can see, I made a real mess. I suppose the only real way of capturing this dust is to put a chute at the end of the bench. Once I'd finished with the router inserted in the table, I took it out and replaced it with my MFT infill. I needed to swap out my insert plate for the proper base plate and then attach my guide rail adapter. Because I can't plunge with this router bit inserted, I needed to set the depth before I started to make any additional cuts. And then it's just a case of clamping the piece to the bench and the guide rail to the piece, making a series of cuts across the length of the board. I just put these grooves in randomly because I don't really know what the projects are that I will use it for going forward. So I thought grooves in irregular places may be as good as ones at an exact centre. You may also notice I'm using a collet extension piece here, also by Axminster. My next task is to mount the guide rail to the back of this board. So I wanted to work out roughly where it was going to be and left the board a little bit too long, ensuring that I insert the screws into the full 18mm of MDF and not into the grooves. I pilot hold and then screwed the first one in and ensuring the thing was square, lock down the remaining three screws. Now the next step may be unnecessary, but to ensure the thing is totally parallel, I ran it past the router cutter to trim off the excess. Now I am sure this will get battered and will eventually need replacing, but let's start off as we mean to go on, with a nice parallel face close to the cutter that you can use to align stock up against. Now even though I had that shiny face, I was amazing how much friction there was between the worktop. So I gave the old thing a wire wooling down and then a good run over with my trusty candle. And that slid much better. 
And just to finish off this part of the build, I just put a small chamfer around the edges to take off the sharp corners. Next, I needed to come up with some kind of fence to run my stock against. And it would also be good if it had a flag stop so I could make accurate, repeatable cuts. And whilst I was puzzling on how I would make this fence, I realised it was staring me straight in the face. And that was my bench dog's fence that I used from my cutting station. Using my path guide kit, I inserted three holes in the board to mount the fence. Two to make it 90 degrees and an additional hole that I could swing it to 45 degrees. Now there's two issues with this. Firstly, the dimensions read the wrong way. And secondly, I run the risk of routering off a chunk of my prize fence. After pondering the issue, I came up with this design. Using a piece of inch and a half by two, I routed out to the depth of a piece of inch timber, about six inch at the end of the fence. Then set my router up with a six millimeter cutter and routed a groove down one edge. Changed the router cutter for my smaller T-slot cutter and completed routering the T-slot. Next, to make my stop, I needed a couple of pieces of plywood and here I'm using some offcuts of 12mm. It is now noticeable with the darker evenings and cooler mornings that I'm spending a little bit more time each week inside the loft workshop rather than playing outside. And using Jason from Bourbon Moth's Ip Thrusting method inserted a couple of dominoes to join the two pieces together. I found with the 12mm plywood that the 4mm domino worked perfectly. And once I'd ensure the stop was the correct size, it was just a case of applying some glue and a clamp and putting it to one side for the glue to cure. And whilst the glue was curing, I eased the four edges of the fence with my block plane. I marked a grid of pencil lines out and inserted four 4mm slots. I'm really liking the ability of the domino to insert small slots. On maximum setting, the 4mm bit wouldn't quite punch all the way through and it just left a small wafer that I could prod out with my pencil. By this time, the glue on my stop had dried, so I could give it a sanding, offer it up to the fence and mark where the T-slot was, and then drill a 6mm hole. Insert a T-slot bolt, fit the stop over the bolt, and then tighten it up with a nut. Yay, time to play back outside in the sunshine. Here I'm cutting a small piece of 2b1 down and then fixing it into the recess in the fence, securing it with four pocket hole screws. The idea is that this small piece of wood will take all the battering from the router cutter with the coping cuts etc and can be replaced every time I need to start a fresh project. Ok, so it's time to have a play with my new jig. First of all I squared the fence up with the edge of the jig and clamped it down with two rail squares. I can then use a further square to hold the stock to the fence, or indeed the stock to the jig. This piece here is just a piece of scrap I'm experimenting with, and here I'm tightening up the stop to make repeatable cuts. And this shot here is from another of my airbrain schemes that's currently under construction and will be coming your way in a couple of weeks. Finally, on another piece of scrap, I cut a few housings, dados, and some of these was at an angle. Those that were supposed to be square actually were. Well, and ever. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next video next week.